Welcome to your first lesson in college algebra. Uh, just a reminder that you are not expected to understand everything. Please copy down the notes. Please think about them. Most importantly, think about what questions you have. So when I go over this material in class, you can ask me questions of things you don't understand. You can ask me to elaborate or go over something again. Um, so make sure you have these copied down before each lecture and come prepared to class with questions. Let's talk about the Cartesian coordinate system in section 2.1. We have the x-axis, which is the horizontal axis. We have the y-axis, which is the vertical axis. And the point 0, 0 is called the origin. Any point can be written as an ordered pair, x, comma, y, in that order. So for example, if we have the point negative 4, 2, the x-coordinate is negative 4, and the y-coordinate is 2. So from the origin, since the x is negative 4 and the x-axis is the horizontal axis, we are going to go 4 units to the left and 2 units up. And this represents the point negative 4, comma 2. The second point is 2, negative 5. The x-coordinate is 2. The y-coordinate is negative 5, which means we will go 2 units to the right and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units down. And this point is the point 2, comma, negative 5. Now, 4, 0, the x-coordinate is 4, and the y-coordinate is 0, which means we go 4 units to the right. But since the y-coordinate is 0, we don't go up or down. So the ordered pair is 4, 0. Lastly, our ordered pair is 0, negative 3. So we stay in the middle uh, because we don't go left, we don't go right. x-coordinate is 0, and we go 3 units down. And this is the point 0, comma, negative 3. From plotting points, we are going to talk about graphing lines by plotting points. So the graph of an equation and two variables is a set of all ordered pairs x, y in the, in the plane that satisfy the equation, which means for any given line, any point that when you plug in the x and the y makes the left side equal to the right side, that point will be on the line. Let's start by taking the equation y equals negative 2x plus 3 and, um, and gathering five ordered pairs to, to plot. Let's start with x equals negative 2. The x value, this is called the input. The input is a value you substitute or plug into the equation, and that will give us the output, which is the y value. So the y value, this is called the output. So in the first case, our input is negative 2, which means we will substitute this x value with negative 2. And this will give us y equals to negative 2 times negative 2 plus 3. So let's recall, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. When you multiply a negative times a negative, it gives you a positive. And 4 plus 3 is 7. So our corresponding y value is 7, which means our ordered pair is always written as x comma y is negative 2, 7. If we plug in negative 1, we get negative 2 times x, which is negative 1, plus 3. Notice we change the input from negative 2 to negative 1, since in the second line our input is negative 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 is 2, 2 plus 3 is 5. So our next ordered pair is going to be x equals negative 1, y equals 5. Next, input is 0, so we are going to replace the x value with 0. The x value always gets replaced with the input. Um, anything times 0 is 0, and 0 plus 3 is 3, so our next value is 2 comma 3. Now notice we're decreasing the y value by 2 each time, 7, 5, 3. We can guess the next one is going to be 1. So we have, let's check it out, we have y equals to negative 2 times 1 plus 3. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, and negative 2 plus 3 is equal to 1. So we have 1, comma, 1. Finally, we have y equals 2. So we have y equals negative 2 times 2. Um, now this time, negative times a positive is a negative. So that's negative 4 plus 3, which is a negative 1. And our ordered pair is 2, comma, negative 1. Let's plot these. Our first point is negative 2, 7. So negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then we have negative 1, comma, 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then we have 0, comma, 3, 1, 2, 3. Then we have 1, comma, 1. 
and then finally we have 2 comma negative 1. Now if we did it correctly, all these points should make a straight line, which they do, so we draw our line. Um, let's try to do that again. And you'll have to ignore my lack of straight line because I don't have a ruler, but it should be a straight line. And each line has arrows at the end indicating the line continues forever in, in each direction. So make sure that for every line you do put these arrows at the ends. Okay, next one is uh, 2x plus 4y equals 8. We are given the inputs and we will do this one in class. Next concept, we will talk about the x and y intercepts. So let's talk about the definitions. The x intercept is the point at which the, gra the graph touches or crosses the x axis. The y intercept is the point at which the graph touches or crosses the y axis. So in this case, let's take our graph and figure out where does it cross the x axis. It crosses the x axis at this point, negative uh, 3, comma 0. So this point, 3, 0, this is your x-intercept. The, the, the point at which the graph touches or crosses the y-axis is your y-intercept. So this is the y-axis. It Our line crosses the y-axis at this point. And so this point, 0, 6, this is the y-intercept. Same, same thing here. This is our x-axis. That's our graph. Our graph crosses the x-axis at this point, which is the point 4, comma 0. Our graph crosses the y-axis at this point, which is 0, comma negative 3. So this is our x-intercept, and that is our y-intercept. In this case, our x-intercept is 5, 0, and our y-intercept is 0, negative 5. In this case, both our x and our y-intercept is 0, 0 because at that point, the line crosses both the x and the y-axis. Now here's what I want you to notice. Every x-intercept, we have 3, 0, 4, 0, 5, 0. So I'll list those out. 3, 0, 4, 0, 5, 0. These are our x-intercepts. Notice what they all have in common. The x value changes, but the y value is always 0. And the reason for that is because this is y equals 2, y equals 1. For us to be on the y-axis, for us to be on the x-axis, I apologize, for us to be on the x-axis, the y-value always has to be 0. So this is y equals 2, that's y equals 1. For us to be on the x-axis, which is the point at which the graph is going to cross the x-axis, uh, that's your x-intercept, the y-value has to be 0, which is why for every x-intercept, the y-value is 0. And the exact opposite tr is true for the y-intercept. Let's take a look at our y-intercepts. This one is 0, 6. Sorry. We have 0, 6. This one is 0, negative 3. And this one is 0, negative 5. So notice that all the x values are 0 because in order for the graph to be on the y-axis, y this is x equals 2, x equals 1. At the y-axis, the x value is going to be 0. So for all x-intercepts, this will be true. The y value is going to be 0 for all x-intercepts. And for all y-intercepts, the x value will be 0. And we're going to use this as a rule to find our x and y-intercepts. So in order to find the x-intercept, let y equal to 0 and solve for x. In order to find the uh, y-intercept, let x equal to 0 and solve for y. So the graph this equation by finding its intercepts. So let's find the x-intercept first. In order to find the x-intercept, we will set the y-value equal to 0. So to find the x-intercept, we need to set the y-value equal to 0. Why do we need to do that? Because as we showed on this graph, in order to be on the x-axis, the y value, this is 2, 1, the y value is 0 on the x-axis. So every x-intercept will have a y value of 0. So in this equation, we have 3x, but we are going to replace the y with 0, and that equals to negative 6. Now we know that anything times 0 is 0, so we get 3x equals to negative 6, which means x equals to negative 2. And each intercept 
is a point. So we represent that point using the x and the y-intercept. So our x-intercept is going to be the point negative 2, comma, 0. Now to find the y-intercept, we do the exact opposite. To find the y-intercept, let x equal to 0. And once again, we saw here that every single y-intercept had an x-value of 0 because on the y-axis, the x-value is equal to 0. So in this equation, we are going to substitute the x equal to 0 in order to find the y-intercept. So we have 3 times x, which is 0, minus 2y equals to negative 6. Anything times 0 is 0. So we have negative 2y equals to negative 6. If you divide both sides by negative 2, we get y equals to 3. So the y-intercept is the point 0, comma 3. Always write this as an ordered pair, the x value, comma, the y value. To graph this equation, we simply have to graph the points. So we have negative 2, 0, that is our x-intercept. We have 0, comma 3, that is our y-intercept. And if we connect these two points, then we have our line. Think about the next example. You don't have to do it. We will do this in class. But think about how would you find the x-intercept? And how would you find the y-intercept? OK, next let's talk about the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem states that for any right triangle, so this has to be a right triangle, with sides of length a, b, and c, the following is true. a squared plus b squared equals to c squared. So using this, we're going to find the distance between the two points, negative 2, comma 5, and 1, comma 1. Okay, we want to find this distance. Now, in order to find this distance, here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a right triangle by dropping down um, the vertical distance and then going across the horizontal distance. This creates a right triangle. So the vertical distance, we are going from y equals 1 to y equals 5. So we're going for, uh, up 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces. So our vertical distance is 4. The horizontal distance is 1, 2, and 3. We're going from uh, x equals 1 to x equals negative 2. So that's 1, 2, 3 spaces. So our, our vertical distance is 4. Our horizontal distance is 5. So in this Pythagorean theorem, our vertical distance given by a is 4. So a squared, this will be 4 squared. Our horizontal distance is given uh, is 3, which is given by b. And this equals to c squared, which represents the distance between these two points. So 4 squared is 16. 3 squared is 9. 16 plus 9 is 25, equal to c squared. Now, in order to undo a square, we need to square root this. Feel free to put this in a calculator, but radical 25, it means we, got, we have to think about which number to the second power will give you 25. And in this case, it'll be 5. 5 squared is 25, so the square root of 25 is equal to 5. So the distance between these two points is going to be 5 units. So now let's say we have these arbitrary points. We have x1 and y1. These are just any two points. So we got x1, y1, and then this is x2, y2. In class, we will uh, find a formula for the distance between these two points, and we will use that formula in, in order to find the distance between these points. Because if you notice, if you try to graph these on a number line, uh, on, a, on, a, on a coordinate plane, um, It'll be really hard to graph a big number like negative 32, comma, 27, or another point like negative 37, 39. So um, we will use the formula, which we're going to come up with in class, in order to find the distance between these two points.